Hi, I'm John Dudley and welcome to the training video for the new Carter Evolution release aid. Now for the last 10 years I've been shooting professionally and I've been waiting for a product like this to come out and help the average archer to develop that surprise, unanticipated, back tension style shot sequence that today's top pros are using. In this video what I'd like to do is walk you through a few key fundamentals and a few key elements that I believe are essential in learning how to properly shoot a back tension style shot using this Carter Evolution. Now before we start shooting our Carter Evolution, let's go inside and work on some fundamentals that I was discussing earlier. These elements are going to be a correct setting on your draw length, a correct position in your front shoulder and head positioning, as well as a consistent and repeatable anchor point. Okay, now let's get into using this new Evolution. Now with any new release aid, I'd recommend first getting familiar with it with either a bow simulator or simply a piece of release rope that's tied off to your draw length. Now what I'd like you to do is several times load your release onto either your simulator or your release rope, depress the safety feature, come to your anchor point, disengage the safety, and pull straight back until the release fires. This is going to be the exact feeling that you're going to have later when making your surprise unanticipated shots. But again, first let's just go through this a few times so that you're familiar with how this release works and familiar with the safety feature. Depressing the trigger will cause the release not to fire. If you let go of the release aid and pull, it will fire. First let's talk about draw length. Draw length in my opinion is key to all the other elements that we're going to discuss. If your draw length is set properly, the string should come to rest at the corner or barely past the corner of your mouth. This will allow the string to go in front of your nose at full draw. If you're drawing the string past the side of your nose or well beyond the corner of your mouth, then your draw length's too long. If you're having to reach your head forward to the string or bring your front shoulder very high in order to get, get the draw length correct, then your draw length is too short. Here's an example of a draw length that is set properly. Again, coming to rest at the corner of the mouth and the string angle going just in front of the tip of the nose. Okay, now that we've talked about draw length, the next element that we're going to discuss is your front shoulder position. As we're going through this back tension style motion, your front shoulder is going to dictate how easy or difficult that action is to perform. If your draw length is set properly, your front shoulder is going to be in a down and forward position. Usually if your draw length is too short or if you naturally have an improper shoulder position, it's most likely going to be in a high position that's up against the neck. This is going to make it extremely difficult to properly execute the shot by pulling through. Again, your front shoulder position should be down and forward. The easiest way for me to describe to you how to get your shoulder in that position or make sure it stays in that position is simply take your bow and pick it straight up towards the target and then pull the release back towards you. If you're doing a pushing and pulling motion, then usually it automatically puts your shoulder in a high position. Again, pick the bow arm straight up towards the target and pull the release back to you. This is going to put the front shoulder in a low position that we need to have to properly perform this back tension style shot. The next thing I'd like to talk about is having a consistent and repeatable anchor point. To do this, grab your release aid so that your hand is relatively flat. This will also create a natural V between your middle finger and your forefinger. That V should be laid comfortably anywhere along your jawline. Now some people like to shoot a release aid that's more vertical and some people like to shoot one that's more horizontal. I personally shoot one that's more horizontal. This isn't really critical whether you do one or the other, but what is important is that you do it the same all the time. You must have it repeatable and consistent. Now the last thing I'd like to discuss is your torso alignment and your head position. Your torso and your head should remain vertical and erect. 
At full draw, if you find yourself leaning your head back behind the string or bringing your head forward to the string, this is not going to be in the correct position. Also, look at photos of yourself. If you see yourself leaning back or leaning forward, this is not going to be in the correct position. You should put two-thirds of your weight on your front foot and make sure that your body and torso are erect. To make sure your head is in a correct position, what you need to do is simply look towards the target and then pull your release hand back towards your anchor point. The body should pretty much look like half of a T when it's at full draw. All right, now that we've gone through these four key fundamentals, let's get into how we're going to activate this release using back tension. Now back tension has been written about and described in several different ways and I personally believe that it's still largely misunderstood. If you want to see true back tension in action, take a look at today's top Olympic style recurve shooters. You'll notice that they consistently and constantly pull through their clickers until eventually their shots fire and execute. This is the exact same feeling, the exact same motion that we're going to have using the new Carter Evolution. Now to do this, we're going to use a small muscle group in the center of the rear of your back called the rhomboid muscles. The contraction of these muscles is going to allow you to pull backwards or move your elbow back behind you and increase pressure until eventually this release aid is going to fire. This is going to give you that surprise, unanticipated shot that we've been talking about. Once you're totally comfortable using this release with either the bow simulator or the release rope, let's move into using it on your own equipment. Now I'd highly recommend starting out on a blank bale without a sight on your bow. I want you to first focus on the movement that we described in contracting the rhomboid muscles and increasing pressure until the shot fires. Right now I just want you to think about using the back tension style movement that we discussed. Now if this whole process is new to you, don't at all be afraid to spend a lot of time on a blank bale just learning not only the back tension motion, but how to pull through this release and get that surprise shot. After you've done this on the blank bale several times and you're comfortable without the sight on your bow, let's put the sight back on your bow and do the exact same process only looking through your scope. I don't think it's important that you aim at a specific object. I just want you to look through your scope and getting used to going through this pulling motion and this surprise shot sequence while looking through your normal aiming device. Finally ready to start aiming at some targets. Now regardless of what style of archery you shoot, whether it's 3D archery or if you're a bow hunter or a target or field archery, it really doesn't matter. I'd recommend starting out with the plain spot in front of you. We're going to go through the exact same motions that we have on the bow simulators and on the blank bale. Regardless of how your front pin is moving or how you're holding on this target right now, it shouldn't change anything and especially the motion that we've been working on this entire video. What you'll find is a properly executed shot utilizing the movement in the back half and a strong back half shot. It'll make up for a lot of the imperfections that you may see in the front of your bow or through your scope. I've found personally that executing good back half shots will make up for a lot more mistakes than just holding steady in the front half. So let's go ahead and make some shots at a spot. Now some of you may feel some anxiety when aiming at a spot for the first time. Just worry about pulling through the exact motion that we've worked on. Nothing should change. Now if you know that you have a bad case of target panic and you have a lot of anxiety and are unable to get your pin on the target, then I would recommend backtracking and going back to the blank bale 
so that you can build confidence in the fact that all you have to do is pull and the shot's gonna fire. I've been asked the question, does my pin always sit right in the middle of the X-ring? And no, my pin doesn't always sit there. My pin moves around just like almost all of our pins do. What's more important than what's happening through your scope or in the front half of your body is what's happening in the back half. The pulling motion and the back tension and consistent fluid motion that we've been working on this entire video is going to put more arrows in the X-ring than just being a person that's able to hold dead still and wait for your release to go off. If you're an archer that's fighting a bad case of target panic, which could involve freezing beneath the target, punching your release, or flinching, those are all issues that are definitely real difficult to live with. However, all of them have been overcome from somebody over time. I personally had a very bad case of target panic earlier in my career. I used a hinge style release and a lot of time to eventually overcome that fear and that target panic. Now if I would have had a release like this evolution, something that I could feel comfortable pulling back and letting down, and something that would just teach me that all I had to do was pull and the shot was going to go off. I think I could have overcame those fears a lot sooner and with a lot less stress than what I did. My recommendation to you would just be be patient and work on blank bail shooting and eventually move into putting your pin on a target. Don't worry about how good you're holding at first. Just worry about the fact that you've got your pin on the target and just think to yourself, pull, 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 and the shot's gonna go off, and eventually you're gonna be really happy with the fact that you finally put your pin in the center of the dot, and you've executed a shot sequence without flinching or punching the release. You'd be surprised at how many top archers have overcome target panic. This evolution release is the best way and the best tool that I see today to overcome these fears and these anxieties. You may find that your Carter evolution is going to feel differently on your personal bow than it did on the release rope. To set this up properly, I would encourage you to use something like the Easton Bow Force Mapper. This is a great tool for showing you the firing weight of your evolution release as well as the peak weight and holding weight of your personal bow. Well that's another X and I don't know about you but I'm ready to get back outside. If so, you're going to be so freaking pumped. Hey, there's no doubt this new Carter Evolution is the best release aid I've ever shot. If you work on these practice techniques and fundamentals that we've discussed here today, I'm certain that your archery game will get taken to a new level as well. Everyone at Carter wishes you a good luck this next shooting season, and also good luck with your new Carter Evolution.